This show is about basketball in Malaysia. Assalamualaikum. Uh, salam guys. So, kalau kau nak tahu, this is like worldwide. An hour before aku launch the video. So, me- memang seriously this week aku macam-macam tak sempat. But I'm 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 kind of happy that this this time around we get to do it. Let's go. Um, I've been wanting to do it with him, uh, get to know him a bit more better, understand his experience. You know, for first time gold medalist, um, sea games. You know, kita pernah sea games pun dua kali je. Uh, it's something to be proud of. Um, being able to talk to him, aku rasa open up my eyes, uh, trying to understand a bit more uh, the history of Malaysian basketball uh, and the sort of journey that we had uh, since Sea Games. Whatever. So, aku macam really, really um, proud and honored to be able to talk to him. And I hope you guys can enjoy the the video interview podcast uh, as much as I did because it's pretty long, about one hour. So I'm I'm doing it the same like Abi. You know, kind of need to have. So this is the first part of my conversation with Hugo. Enjoy. Um, okay. So no, okay. maybe we can start with an introduction. Uh, would you, yeah. um, would you be able to introduce yourself, Coach? Uh, good evening. Uh, you mean uh, to the viewers or to the listener? To the viewers. To like. the viewer. Yeah. Okay. To the viewer. Good evening. Uh, I think uh, you can. Most of them address me as uh, Fatko or Kushko. So actually, I'm now age going to uh, 65 plus, going wow. to 66. Wow. And actually, uh, all the while I've been mentioned before, actually, uh, the whole, I mean, almost the whole career or whatever is it, is because of basketball. <laughs> I have today. I should be thankful to this uh, that ball, the basketball. So wow. because basketball, and now I can just say that uh, most actually, what my dream is, I want to go to university for my education, but end up I go to uh, basketball university. Oh, wow. Graduated. In basketball university, wow. so that just joking on it lah. So because other than that, in the beginning, uh, I couldn't get into lower six, the form six. So that ends up, I have no choice but to quit my education and start off my career playing basketball at the age of uh, maybe that one was under Perak. It was uh, U18, so that was the first time I start representing Perak States. So end up, I have no choice because of uh, maybe my family is poor, so so I couldn't. Uh, my mother told me that you have uh, uh, so many brothers and sisters need to go educate, go to school also. So your father cannot afford you to send to private oh, wow. uh, school. So end up, well, it's just uh, things that have no choice. They have to make a decision either to continue study or to quit study and continue with what I want to do in the, in the next step. So end up, I have nothing else to do but think about uh, playing basketball. Maybe that is one of the, what do you say that, uh, one of my goal. So I have no choice but just uh, continue with my basketball career. It's really, it's a, it's a very prideful moment to represent Malaysia, uh, maybe at quite a young age. What, what does it mean to you to represent Malaysia? Uh, who were your teammates at the time? Uh, I have so many questions actually, but um, I think uh, like any any proud Malaysian, what, how, what does it mean for you to actually represent Malaysia? You want to know the, the truth? Yes. Actually, uh, I represent Malaysia. One of the reasons is uh, just simple one. I can fly free of charge. Ah. 
You don't get it. <laughs> yeah, you get to travel. No, you don't get the point. Yeah. Because actually, uh, the, the time air ticket is not cheap. Mm -hmm. So if I were to travel overseas, where do I find money to travel overseas? Oh. So if I play, I represent the country. So if the the, the Asian Championship or Sea Games are held in uh, host in any overseas country or so, I get free of a free flight over there to participate in the tournament. So that's that's actually the first thing I managed to fly overseas, and I will just uh, sometimes I envy all those rich people that they are able to fly here for holiday and that but this is one good opportunity for me to fly right around wow wow yes, um uh the gold medal 1979 that that yeah. that was really an interesting uh, episode in in the national team because that was the first gold medal we won sea games on basketball would you like to care to share the experience Mm, it, uh, now only it looks valuable. Previously, when we wanted a uh, uh, gold medal at the time, it's just what we say another medal. Really, because it, we we didn't know that on the way down till after forty years of maybe you say it's seventy nine, eighty nine, ninety nine, oh nine, one nine, forty years, man. Mm -hmm. So we did the whole journey down until 40, that 40 years. Only mm -hmm. 89, we managed to win the uh, gold medal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that we didn't realize that 79 was one of the, uh, that gold medal is so precious. You got it. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if all the on the way, even 89 or so, we didn't make, uh, we didn't win that uh, gold medal. Then 79 is just one gold medal that stops flipping uh, from, I mean, uh, monopolize the whole sea games, almost the whole sea game. Yeah, till today. So this, until today, I until agree. Today. So till today, man. So that one 79 and 89. We Malaysia managed to stop Philippines for monopolizing the whole Sea Games gold medal. So uh, until now, so that shows that when during that time, uh, the the real stories begin. How we start? Uh, I still can recall that uh, how we start beating Philippines. Is that wow? This is the best part. We start. Okay, you want to know the whole? Yeah. the whole. Yeah, please, please. I'm sure a lot of young players want yeah. to know how we got our first gold medal. Our batch of players, that we were lucky to have a free call that coach, a running captain, came to Malaysia. He was maybe assigned to help the national junior. We were the batch that he was handling. And the first point he point he did want us to start off this defense. He just work, work, work on defense and I still can remember when we do that uh, starter step or we call it fire nowadays, yeah. that starter step, that every more, every training after three, uh, the end of the training we have to do that. It at least uh, works on that to help us our quick feet how we manage to uh, move that fast. And the next thing is the positioning of defense. He likes uh, one pass away, especially one pass away, deny. He makes, he just explained that until now, I still remember that deny, that strong deny to force the uh, offensive player to move out of his range of uh, offense. So that really helps. Oh, wow. And the next thing is when we were defending the ball one, we he just encourages pressure, pressure, pressure. That really I until now as a coach only I realized that is what it really matters or it really works as a defense. It's not like we just fear we wouldn't dare to pressure on the ball. And one pass away, we are not denying, we just sack inside, we worry, they get back door, all these things. We, we didn't realize, but 
if we don't do that, the first thing we are on the baseline. <laughs> so we have to do that for suicide. So until that, we realize that uh, that is that is part of his system. So we have to do it, but we didn't realize that really works. And when we come back to that, until now, or that during that time, and all our, among our, our players, our teammates, we, when we have good defense, that stops Philippines. Because Philippines at that time is just a lot of individual skill. They are good, they are held good on individual skill. But once we have that solid defense, we manage to stop that. And the first time that we start beating Philippines, I still can remember is in Gunting Highland. Gunting Highland, yeah, Gunting Highland, they, uh, they just uh, have an uh, international invitation invited into, uh, I still can remember invited, and maybe Thailand, Indonesia, uh, Singapore is there, so a few teams, uh, and mm -hmm. including uh, Philippines. Mm -hmm. That was the time when we beat uh, Philippines, I think by two points or one point. Wow, and that's very I close. still can remember that when we were playing Philippines, we were down by around 10 points. My coach, Fung, uh, the late uh, Fung King Chong, he just called. Coach, uh, he told me, uh, maybe he called my name. Say what, you come. I stop me in. And when he, when I was playing the time, there's no three point. Oh, yes, I don't know exactly. what, was, uh, be, what was behind me. When I go down, I just look. When I, they throw me the ball, I just nail up the shot. And I think I make a couple of shots. That game, until the last minute, uh, I make that two free throw. When we tie the game, I make that two free throw. But within one, actually, it's it's almost we still got one minute to go so within that one minute both sides they attack us they couldn't score we attack them we couldn't score but we are still leading by two points oh wow until the game finished we won by two points that wow. is the first time that we beat Lippi. wow and from, i think from <laughs> i still can remember that because well, maybe it's just uh, some, somebody is helping God is maybe behind me or that, that helps me to hit to all those important shots and just make that two free throw. But within that minute, nothing, nobody scored and we managed to hold on to that and we won that game. Wow. So that was the first uh, beginning that we started with Philippines. And wow. from that onward, then when we have uh, a long way back, we have a Singapore, they call it Pesta Singapore. I think for those senior ones, maybe like players like Jamri, all those the veterans at my age one, they know there's Pesta Singapore. It's one of the annual uh, international invitation by Singapore. So we participated in that. From that onward, we went PESA Singapore, we emerged champion, beating Philippines, all this thing. Until the SEA Games in 79 in Jakarta, Senayang, uh, Indoor Park. That, that one we, we start with. Them. So from the, the following year, then we went Philippines. Philippines was the host for the SEA Games. Oh, yeah. That was a pandemic. Uh, yeah. Okay. That one uh, back, the two years back, that was in 81 in uh, Manila, Philippines. The Sea Games, we played the, mm, the final against uh, Philippines. So, and uh, the president of uh, Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos, was there witnessing the game. But unfortunately, uh, so one of my teammates, he start off, uh, the game was quite close actually, he start off. So in the one the, the point guard from Philippines, 
it was uh, I still remember in front the half court line there when they just uh, two of them just challenged for the ball the ball went out so we were great running back for defense so he came up and both of them to, uh, I mean crash and falls on the floor how he read, he came up but he, the leg his leg he just kicked that point at the start of the whole fight <laughs> so the whole the whole stadium erupt and that that is how uh we, we stopped the game and i think if uh, those players were there for the 81 in philippine final we just can imagine that uh philippine one peso that is bigger than the our 50 cent coin it was just like bullet flying from the stadium down on us on the wow. bench then. Oh, wow. Oh, just imagine. And That's we a... couldn't, and we just had to be just uh, huddled around us, uh, our bench there. Couldn't do anything, the whole stadium. And I still can remember uh, those incidents. Even we, 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 what you said, we just had to go down, hold on. There's no such thing as we can run to the dressing room. No way, no way out, really. We just have to be there. Uh, I think that we are fortunate the president of uh, Philippines is there. The bodyguard is around there. I think they managed to stop the whole thing. Wow, that's an experience to share. <laughs> um, if, if we managed to just view that time, I think there, there was life of in Philippines only. La, but maybe there was way back in 81. So that was, that was one moment. But anyhow, we, uh, like with the, our chef, uh, the, the mission of uh, Malaysia, we just we have to finish up the game because the president of uh, Philippines is there. Wow. So we, we just finish up the game, and I think nobody to blame now. This part of the game now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, final. Yeah. There's always tension. Everybody wants to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure, sure. um, and and Philippines were the host, so I, I I guess they would give a bit more a bit more um fire from the crowd to actually yeah, you know yeah. show on the floor. I that think they, they want to because win. of uh, maybe seventy nine they lost that gold medal, mm -hmm. and that this uh eighty one gold medal really matters to them. So one of yeah. the things, the tension is there, the pressure, everything is there. And of course, uh, even uh, the, the president of the uh, Philippines also purposely make to the, because the basketball is maybe the national sport. Yeah, right? national sport. So the president is there, so to witness the final game.